In a previous tutorial, I showed how to make a 3D train animation that played in a web browser window using Blender's NLA editor. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use code to play the animation, making the scene interactive. In this case, when the user clicks the ground plane, the animation is played. The starting point for this tutorial is the file made in my tutorial on a train animation in a web browser. You can download the file from my website or you can follow my train tutorials and make a similar file yourself. Clicking on Scene Properties because the NLA is checked, when the 3D scene loads, the strips in the NLA editor will be played, and because cyclic is checked, they will loop continuously. I'm going to uncheck them. We are going to use code so that the user controls the animation. I need to make one of the objects in the scene selectable select the ground plane and in the object properties scroll down and in the selection and outlining panel click selectable. I'm going to set things up so that when the user clicks the ground plane the animation runs. That's all the changes that we need to make to the blender scene. I am going to make some cosmetic changes to the ground plane, setting shading to smooth. In the material properties, I'm also going to uncheck back face culling for both materials linked to the ground plane. The user can view the scene from any angle, including from underneath. Next, I'm going to create a blend for web project that links the Blender scene to JavaScript code. In Render Properties, click Project Manager. Click Hide Stock Projects and Create New Project. I'm going to call the new project My Train Game 1. Scroll down and click Create Project. When you see Project Created, click Back to Projects. The new project has a dummy Blender file. We need to overwrite it. And we need to use the Blender file to overwrite the dummy JSON file. Back in Blender, File, Save As, go to the Blend for Web folder, the Projects folder, the My Train Game 1 folder, Blender folder, click on the Blender file and click Save As to overwrite it. To overwrite the JSON file, File, Export, Blend for Web JSON. Make sure you're in the Train Game 1 Assets folder, click on the JSON file and click Export to overwrite it. Now we just need to add the extra JavaScript code. Going back to Project Manager, click the Edit link and open the JavaScript file, the .js file. Here I have the finished file open in a text editor. You can download the file from my website or you can type in the code yourself. The first thing I'm going to copy over is the extra modules used. Right click, copy, click right click paste scrolling to the end where it says place your code here and finding the same point in the finish code highlight the code right click copy click right click paste the code adds an event listener that listens for a mouse down event. When the event occurs, the main canvas clicked callback function is called. 
Now we just need to copy over the callback function, highlight, right click, copy, click, right click, paste. I will go through the function explaining what it does, but for now, click save and back to projects. Click the link for the HTML web page and hope that it all works. If it doesn't, see my tutorial on using the web console for basic debugging. Clicking on the ground plane, the animation runs. I'm going to go back to Project Manager now to look at the code. Going back to look at the main canvas clicked callback function, the function that is called when the event E of the main canvas being clicked occurs. For the event E, we get the X and Y coordinates of where the main canvas was clicked. The pick object function returns a selectable 3D object if there is one under the mouse pointer and if not returns null. This if statement is just testing that object is not null and this if statement is checking that I've clicked on the ground plane I could have made other objects in the 3D scene selectable. Next there are four blocks of code each block with four lines starting with var engine and ending with finish stop one block for the train engine and one block for each of the carriages. So what do the four lines do? Well first of all we get a link to the engine or one of the carriages. Then we apply a stored animation action to the engine or carriage. This line actually plays the animation action linked to the engine or carriage. And this line sets the behavior of how the animation is played. In this case, played once and then stop. So when the user clicks on the ground plane, animation actions are linked to the engine and the three carriages and the actions are played. Any action can be linked to any object and you may have noticed that the second carriage is linked to the third action and the third carriage is linked to the second action. When I made the stored animation actions, I must have made the action for the third carriage before I made the action for the second carriage. If I link them the other way around, the stored start and end locations would be wrong. Going back to Blender, instead of using these NLA strips to play the actions they are linked to, we've used code. Now we need to use code to play the sound effects linked to these NLA strips. First of all, we get a link to the speaker object in the 3D scene that is linked to the sound file. We play the sound file, which lasts five seconds, which matches the 120 frames it takes for the train to travel to the first stop at 24 frames per second. The train waits 10 frames at the first stop before setting off again. So this set timeout sets a delay of 5 seconds plus 10 frames which is 0.417 of a second before playing the train sound again. I'm going to end the tutorial there. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stickman. 
If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the Patreon link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.